it's kind of a Minnesota mentality. You know, we kind of embrace the winter here. We have to. It's so long uh, that we got to do something. And so to get outside and have an excuse to go fishing and hang out is, is what we do. We put on the fur, we put on the heavy jackets and uh, embrace our winter. Not a lot of people like to come out in the cold. annual eel pout festival. So the eel pout festival is a fishing tournament uh, but it's also kind of a Mardi Gras on ice. Hi mom! Hi dad! Happy to have you! 39 years ago a couple of bait store owners got together and uh, tried to come up with an idea to get some people into Walker, Minnesota which is a town of a thousand people in the middle of winter. So they got together and they roasted a pig on the ice and they said, hey, let's, let's, let's center this event around this ugly fish called the eel pout. So that became their mascot. Now, you may be wondering just what an eel pout looks like. Well, it depends on who you ask. Unless you see it, it's hard to describe, but it's a slimy fish that has the tail like an eel that can actually wrap around your arm. It is a bottom feeding fish. A fish that looks pretty disgusting. It's really, it looks like a salamander with no legs. That's a freshwater cod, you know. It's a beautiful baby from the outside in. Giant tadpole. Ugly, ugly fish that doesn't taste too bad. Oh, it looks like... <laughs> what does the new ball look like? It's very slimy. Nothing you've never seen before. Kiss it. Ah! Kiss it. Oh, yeah. ah! Woo! <laughs> Yes, believe it or not, kissing these slimy fish is a tradition here. Typical year, um, anywhere four, five hundred fish are usually brought in. Yeah, we keep track of it. The DNR is here. They take lengths uh, and they do uh, studies on them. Yesterday, the leaderboard was 9.9 .9 pounds, and typically, I would say a 12 pounder is going to win it. The biggest one we've ever recorded at the event was about 16. Some of them fish, some of them don't. Most of them don't. <laughs> the sheer numbers literally make this a city out on the ice. And as you might imagine, their shelters take all forms, to say nothing of their vehicles. Uh, 1955 Bombardier. And yes, there has been some modifications. Yeah, these got a cult following. There's still a lot of them out there, but they modify them with the motors, the 350 Chevys, and, or else 318 Chryslers and stuff. Put automatic transmissions in. I've had assistance from people, but you have to build a lot of the parts yourself because they don't manufacture them anymore, so. The old original dash. Yeah, it is original. Just a whole host of things going on. Uh, we have the kids perch jerk happening today where uh, the top three kids, uh, biggest perch they catch, uh, went $150, 75 and 50 And we also have the cart races, which will be taking place. Uh, helicopter rides, eel pout curling, where we actually freeze the fish in blocks of ice and slide them across. But we use mops instead of the normal brooms they use in the Olympics. We have the Polar Pout Plunge, where they actually jump in the ice to raise money for charity. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Morgan is here! Polar plunges are popular fundraising events in the northern climbs. While it's hard to imagine anyone jumping into a frozen lake, these hardy souls have donors who pledge money to the Walker Area Community Center in their name in exchange for undertaking this icy endeavor. Frogmen are on hand to assist any in need and to ensure safety. To kick off the polar plunge, we are sending up, handing up a check for $1,500. Walker, Minnesota, listen to a beautiful day on the ice. Let's do this!
eclectic vendors add to the carnival atmosphere here. We found everything from high-end fish houses to Girl Scout cookies. They have fun doing it. You <laughs> sell a lot of cookies here? Yeah. We go through quite a few. Yeah, we sell a lot of cookies yeah. here. This is my new invention here. It's the ice fisherman's landing net. And uh, a couple years ago, I had a good buddy of mine that was fishing and he got 12 nice crappies, but he lost five back down the hole. And I thought, God, it'd be nice if that hole would just shut off once the fish got in there. So I put this together out in the garage. And uh, if you can see here, all you do is, as soon as the fish comes up the hole a little ways, you just hit the foot pedal with your hand, uh, step your foot on it, and the hole shuts off. And you never lose a fish. Never have to get down on your hands and knees. And uh, you're good to go. I've got two different kind of rod holders. This particular design here is set up for sensitivity. This will move, as you can see, wind, anything. If your minnow gets twitchy because there's a fish looking at it, your stick is going to move. It's going to tell you something's going on down there. This is going to keep you from losing sticks too. It's got the coil on there, so you got a little give on a bite. If the fish pulls it down the hole, it threads right in the coil. It won't come out. You can hang it on the wall, tip down, LLC. We're here just showcasing our different additions that Yeti offers from the Angler Edition, which is kind of the more popular, all the way to their Grand Escapes, which is what we're in right now. Offers more of the creature comforts of home. You got your stove, oven, microwave, radio, um, TV obviously goes up there, liquor cabinet, and then in here you've got your bathroom. Over here you're gonna have your dinette along with your refrigerator and then just more seating in the back. Uh, these are a pair of uh, coyote and elk skin gloves. They use them on the Iditarod. That's where uh, Craig got the idea from. They have leashes on them so you can still take them off and do stuff with your dogs. The uh, hat is made out of a real musk ox from Northwest Territories of Canada. Got the longer part on the back and uh, definitely catches lots of looks and high fives and people like getting pictures with me. Right here we got a set of uh, long beaver sheared gloves. It's got uh, elk skin leather, beaver fur, and then it goes up over your sleeve just like the ones I wear do. Uh, these are real good for snowmobiling, they're good for trapping, ice fishing. We got uh, some beaver hats. These are what's called the bomber style. They got the ear flaps on them. You can keep the ear flaps down or you can wear the ear flaps up, kind of like Canadian Mountie style. Uh, he also has them in raccoon, if you want to look like Daniel Boone. The ear flaps flip up on these ones too to keep you warm. It's got a nice felt liner on it, very reasonably priced, and definitely keep you warm no matter what you run into. This is a place where families get outside together, no matter the temperature, and people go to be seen as much as seeing things way out of the ordinary. This is anything but life as usual. It's been a great time, it's a great culture, it's just great people out here on the ice. Living the Minnesota life. The nightlife gets a little crazy, I mean there's guys with different lights on all their fish houses. and It's crazy, this is it, I'm drinking beer, partying, bonfire on the ice. American plays coming off right there. We accept everybody. <laughs> it's a great time. It's, people just come here and have fun with their friends. So and everybody shows up once a year and it's like Christmas for us. It goes late into the night, they have a good time. And I just keep saying it over and over again, it's a fishing tournament, but also Mardi Gras on ice. I mean, that's really what it is. Uh, there's beads, there's people wearing costumes. Uh, it's just a place where people can go to express themselves. <laughs>